Thanks, Bernie. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but about uh, just over two weeks ago was the 40th anniversary of man's first walk on the moon. I was taking the kids to school on that anniversary morning and I casually asked my nine-year-old who was the first man to walk on the moon. After a moment's careful consideration and with remarkable confidence, he replied, Michael Jackson. <laughs> and, and sort of con conjured up visions in my mind of, of Neil Armstrong coming down the ladder of the lunar lander saying something like, one small step for man, one giant moonwalk for mankind. <laughs> if those astronauts were looking back at their home planet, the one thing that was built by living things that they could see with the naked eye from that distance would be a thin line along the northeast Australian coast, a thin line of coral called the Great Barrier Reef. Now, people, it's almost um, sort of overwhelming when people throw numbers at you about the iconic Great Barrier Reef, over 2,000 kilometres long, bigger than many countries, the world's largest and most complex ecosystem, the world's largest world heritage area, the world's largest marine park in the 80s and again in 2004. 2007, it was voted the number one tourist destination on the planet, and just a few weeks ago, it was nominated, or shortlisted rather, as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Iconic indeed. Tony Ayling, a good friend of mine, many people know him, he's probably seen more of the Barrier Reef than any human in history, has also reminded us that when you visit the Barrier Reef, it's not the big numbers that hit you, it's the beauty, it's the inspiring beauty of it all. If you haven't visited, please do. Um, so I've kind of answered my own question already. I'm only a few minutes in. If it's iconic, it's inspiring, of course, why not make it a marine park? But I want to delve into that question just a little bit more deeply. And uh, we all had a bit of a chuckle a moment ago about my son's lack of 19, or ignorance of 1969 history. Let me test your knowledge of 1969 history. How many Queenslanders have seen this map? It was published 44 days after Armstrong first walked on the moon. And it showed, it was published in the Courier Mail in Brisbane, so no excuse, anyone. Uh, showed that 80% of the Great Barrier Reef was under titles for all prospecting rights in 1969. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so not, 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 not too many Queenslanders even, even know that. Um, so uh, there are a couple of problems here. Most of the oil companies, of course, were based overseas. And the bigger problem was that no one... No one knew who actually owned the Great Barrier Reef. Did, was it in international waters? Did it belong to Australia? Did it belong to Queensland? Or, God help us, did it belong to the cockroaches, those people from New South Wales, because that's where the first penal colony in Australia was. <laughs> if, if you find that a disturbing thought, the other, the other option in the legal debate was, did it belong to the Queen of England? Uh, and this was at a time when I was going from high school to university. These were debates going on in, in legal circles in 1969 and the 70s. Why do we have a Great Barrier Reef Marine Park? People like the poet Judith Wright and John Boost and others started what became Australia's first truly national environmental issue, the Save the Reef campaign. I remember it well. The unions got involved, there was a Royal Commission into oil drilling and eventually we got a Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. But we have a Great Barrier Reef Marine Park today because of an overwhelming display of public opinion in favour of conserving it and staving off limestone mining and oil, oil drilling in the 60s and 70s. We have a marine park because the people wanted it and the politicians responded. You fast forward 35 years to the next major issue, the major rezoning, which Bernie uh, um, alluded to in the introduction. Objective, protect all the major bioregions of the park. As you can see, increasing the no-take green zones quite substantially from 5 to 33.4%. A few Brisbaneites, uh, pretty controversial up in the north, I can tell you, but I'm going to make three simple points about that, that uh, rezoning. Uh, most of the surveys, and here's a fairly typical one, indicated that vast majority, 94% of Australians and 90% of coastal Queenslanders wanted greater protection for the park. When it came to the crunch, all major political parties in both houses of parliament voted for it. Oh, oh sorry, I have to go back. Um, and uh, the monitoring we've done in the last five years has shown really dramatic increases in targeted reef fish populations. So again, why did we got wrapped? The people wanted it and the politicians responded. Uh, so in the past, the threats were um, from oil pollution. Uh, these days, of course, with climate change and uh, acidification and so forth, people are very concerned about um, coral bleaching. There are still some, but not, not many, some politicians even, to when it comes to the GBR, it don't matter if it's black or white. Think, think about it for a moment. <laughs> to most Australians, it really does matter. It really does matter if it's black or white. Not so long ago, uh, the landing site on the moon was nominated as uh, a future uh, centre for t uh, moon, future tourism, sorry. Um, 
kind of like a conservation park on the, on the, on the moon. I probably won't make it that to the, as a tourist to the moon. My son might go up there looking for Michael Jackson's footprint. <laughs> But for today, the number, one, the number one tourist destination on the planet is the GBR, and the marine park helps us to uh, ensure that our footprint on that international icon is as light as possible. So why do we have a park? To me, this, the answer is very, very simple. Uh, because Australians decided that we wanted it. Uh, we decided in the 60s, and again in 2004, that we wanted it, and the politicians responded. And if we're really serious about securing the future of the Great Barrier Reef, it's our responsibility to keep telling the politicians we like the Great Barrier Reef the way that it is. Um, my five minutes are up, and Bernie's just about to give me the wind-up, so in the immortal words of Neil Armstrong, I'd better beat it. LAUGHTER